All right. No, wait. Come sorry. On. Bring the GoPro. Bring the okay, GoPro. Wait. Let's figure this out. I want to understand what is it about Grants Gazelle and different um, social classes, different types of Grants Gazelle that influence their risk of getting parasites and infectious diseases. Parasites that we study here that actually have an intermediate host that is a snail or a slug. Um, and so the gazelle eat the snail or a slug and they're the final host hey Cameron, for that go. parasite. So this John's gonna drive us. All right, for one second. Parasites. So, you were editing the film this morning? Yeah, just the parasite sequence. It's actually really fascinating. Apparently the territorial males have a lot more parasites than the bachelors or the females. So you want to make a film about gazelles? Yeah, do you know anything about them? I have a story about a young gazelle. Maybe I can tell you at lunchtime. Last one. I want to tell you a story about a gazelle, yeah? Yeah. All right. In a glade on the far side of Mount Kenya, a male grand gazelle was born into a royal family. They named him Lenana, which means the wise one. His father was king and had many, many queens. He had a happy life, but by the age of two, his father had lost his crown. The new king banished all young males that might threaten him, and Lenana was no exception. At the time, he was too young and weak to challenge the new king, but he made a pact to avenge his father and take back the kingdom. Hold on. This sounds just like Hamlet. Hamlet? No, no, we don't have Hamlet in the bush. Anyway, alone and confused, Lenana wandered through the East African grasslands in constant fear for his life. He avoided jackals, who prey on young gazelles by day, and the large cats, feared by even the strongest bugs at night. He was happy to feast on grass or bush, but because he had to remain on constant alert, he had little time to eat. Wait, no, I know that story. It's Star Wars. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like when Luke crashes his ship on Dagobah and he's all wandering around looking for hey. Yoda. And which story do you think came first? <laughs> Where was I? Lenana finally stumbled across a herd of rejected bachelors. They were youngsters, disgraced former kings, and weaker males who could never win a territory of their own. He could finally rest because he was in a larger herd where every member took turn keeping watch. Now, he could focus on reclaiming the kingdom. He took to sparring, learning from his elders and practicing with his peers. In time, he became quite skilled, and as his herds grew larger, so did his confidence. No, it's not Star Wars, it's Top Gun. Or oh, The Last Samurai. So basically, Lenana is just Tom Cruise. Uh, not exactly. But the time had come to put his skills to the test. At first, the king tried to intimidate our fearless back. He stretched grandly and rushed the bushes with his horns. The competition intensified as they sized each other up in a parallel walk. But Lenana was unfazed. This displays of dominance could no longer keep these two from clashing. They lowered their heads, knocked horns, and battled for the kingdom and all its splendor. As you know, there could be only one victor, and Lenana had superior stamina. The defeated king took to the hills, while Lenana claimed his kingdom, filled with green grass, many queens, and most importantly, the opportunity to mate at will. Nice, a happy ending. We can definitely use this for our film. Not so fast. With great power comes great responsibility. As king, Lenana had to mark his territory, fend off rivals, and watch for predators. 
He also had to sniff the urine of his females until he found one ready to meet. He would then initiate a mate march in hopes of mounting her. But as we know, not every match ends in a dance. In fact, he had little control over the females. They would often spar viciously with each other for no apparent reason. And their loyalty was not to the king, but to the place with the best food. Despite this, life was good at the top, because Lenana didn't suspect what the future had in store for him. You see, a long time ago, the gazelles were very greedy and took too much water. Other animals didn't get enough to drink and started dying out. The water god noticed this and decided to punish the gazelles. From then on, the gazelles were banished from the water holes and forced to get water from the food they eat. But the water god didn't stop there. He put a curse on every male gazelle that whomever became king would grow weak and venerable. Lenana suffered this fate, losing strength every day and narrowly escaping predators. Finally, one day he was cast out of his kingdom, like his father and the many kings before him, with no choice but to rejoin the bachelor hut. There, he spent the rest of his days wondering what had gone wrong, unaware of the curse that had robbed him of his crown. All things considered, Living at the top wasn't so great. Lenana could not become king without suffering this terrible curse. A real catch 22. John, that's not a myth at all. Yeah, the, the curse is the parasite. The parasite from the vegetation is what's weakening the king or territorial male. Right, it, it's amazing that they were able to tell all of this so long ago without the technology we have now. Oh yeah. They were very observant. Definitely. Yeah, but even the scientists don't fully understand it. Like, why are the territorial males more infected than the females and the bachelors? Yeah, Dr. Nzenwa was saying that the territorial males might have higher stress or testosterone levels or are in closer contact with females. Mm. Right, and she said the reinfection rate of grazing in the same area was mm -hmm. higher as well. Yeah. Um, but she was still working it out. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, John, this is an awesome story. Thank you so much. We're definitely using this in our film. Yeah. No worries. Let's go. It might be raining very soon. <laughs> <laughs>